For the following exercises, perform the indicated operation and express the result as a simplified complex number. Okay, we got this. So we've done tons of problems like this on our complex number playlist, which there's a link in the description if you guys aren't on it and you want to do tons of complex number questions to, you know, ace that test that's coming up. We guys got you, but we're going to do these. So let's get down to it. So let's do the first one. So we have 2 plus 3i all being multiplied by 4 minus i. Okay. So what do we do when we have two parentheses? So here's parentheses 1, here's parentheses 2, and they're all being multiplied by each other. Now some students know this as the FOIL method, F-O-I-L. Um, let me know in the comments if they still teach this, if you've ever heard of the FOIL method. Some of uh, students, they don't even, they don't hear of FOIL anymore. When I was growing up and when I learned it, I learned it as the FOIL method. Um, but I'm going to teach it to you as something different. I like to call it the play fair method. Everybody in math has to play fair. So what's going to happen is I always start from left to right. So I always work with my first parentheses and What's going to happen is the two, the first term in the first parenthesis, has to be multiplied by the four. So he's going to be multiplied by the four, but you got to play fair. You got to multiply by all of the possibilities. So the two is also going to need to be multiplied by that negative i. Then you go to the next term, the plus three i. This 3i wants to be multiplied by the 4, and it wants to be multiplied also by the i. Everybody has to play fair. The only reason why you're not multiplying the 2 with the 3i is because they're in the same parenthesis. You can only go from one parenthesis to the other parenthesis. Okay, now since we have the breakdown, let's actually do the math. So let's start with the 2s first. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times a negative i, make sure that you're looking at the signs, it's a negative i. So 2 times a negative i is negative 2i. We're done with the 2. Now we move on to the positive 3i. A 3i times 4 is a positive 12i. And then a 3i times a negative i would be a negative 3. But then how many i's do you have? I had one here and I had another one here. So this would be i squared. So just know that when you're multiplying i's together, so i times i, you pick up the number of i's that you have. It would just be i squared. So if you have i times i times i, it would turn into i cubed. Okay, now we just have to simplify. Let's see, I'm going to group like terms together. I have a negative 2i and a positive 12i. I can group these together because they have the same like term of just being an i. They do not have an i squared, right? And I can't group this one because this is an i squared and these are i's. So I'm going to group these together. Negative 2i plus 12i. Negative 2 plus 12 is a 10i. And then you just add them together with the rest of the guys. So this would be 8 plus 10i minus 3i squared. Now, you might be saying, you know, what does simplified complex uh, notation look like? This is always when you have your real numbers in the front. Your real numbers are any number, you know, that's real, you know, negative 2, negative 3, 4, 10. 12, just numbers in general. Then you have your imaginary numbers. These are the numbers that are with I. And notice how I only have a I here. I don't have an I squared, right? I squares or I cubed or I to the fourth, they are not in simplified complex number notation. So I have to somehow get rid of this i squared. 
Well, here it is, guys. Just know, star this up, I squared is the same thing as saying a negative one. This is super important, and this is, you know, how to bridge the gap between getting everything in simplified notation. So this I squared is really a secret negative one. Oh, so now I can actually do the math here. This is really a negative one multiplied by a negative three. I'm just dropping down that three, right? And then I, you know, just bring back whatever we have here. So now let's see. Negative three times a negative one is a plus three. Then I'm just going to bring everything down. So this would be eight plus 10 I plus three. Let me erase this just so that I have room here. And now still group like terms together. I have an eight and then a plus three. So eight plus three is 11 plus 10 I. And that is your final simplified complex number notation. Your real value is in the front. In this case, it's the 11. And your imaginary value is at the end. It's the 10 I. So that's the answer to the first one. Let's do the same type of idea for the second one. Okay, I have two parentheses being multiplied by each other, so I need to play fair. Let's start with the one all the way to the left, the negative one. And the negative one wants to be multiplied by the negative two. And let me just do that better. There you go. But you gotta play fair. The negative one would also want to be multiplied by the three I. You need to multiply by all terms in that next parenthesis. Then you work with the next one, the plus two I. Plus two I wants to be multiplied by the negative two and also the positive three I. There's all of our breakdown. So let's now do the math. Negative one times a negative two is just a two. A negative times a negative is a positive. Negative one times a three I would be a negative three I. Now we're moving on with the blues. The two I, right? So two I times a negative two is a negative four I. And then two I times three I, two times three is six, and they're both positive, so positive. But now I'm collecting the I's. I had an I here, I have an I here. I multiplied them together, so I picked them up, so I squared. And now let's just simplify. I'm gonna group like terms together. I see that I have two I values here. So I'm gonna say two, negative three minus four is a one. Actually, Christina, whoa, whoa. Negative three minus four is a negative seven. <laughs> I thought this was a positive for two seconds. So negative three minus four is a negative seven I plus six I squared. We still want it in that simplified complex number. And remember, the I squares are not allowed. So what does an I squared really represent? Oh, an I squared is really a negative one. So this is really a negative one. Now just move all the other numbers. So this would be a six multiplied by a negative one. And then we just rewrite the rest. Let's do that math. So we have two minus seven I minus six now, right? Because a positive six times a negative one is a negative six. And now I just group like terms together. I have a two in the front here and a negative six in the back. Two minus six is a negative four. I have to put that number in the front because that's simplified complex notation. The real number has to come in the front. Just the number has to come in the front and then minus seven I. And that is your final answer for this one. Two down, one more to go. Same idea. We're playing fair. I'm multiplying two parentheses together. So I have to work with one term at a time and I have to play fair. So the first term, the four, wants to be multiplied by that four, but 
they also want to be multiplied by the 2i. And then once we do that, we work on the second term, which is a negative 2i. Negative 2i wants to be multiplied by the 4, but then they also want to be multiplied by that 2i. So let's take it from the first term first. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times a positive 2i, 4 times 2 is 8, so plus 8, and then we just tag along that i value. Now let's work with the second guy. Negative 2i times 4 is a negative 8i. And then the negative 2i times a positive 2i is a negative 4, because negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. And then you picked up how many i's? 2i's. i times i is i squared. Group together the like terms. So I have a positive 8i and then a negative 8i. Uh-oh. Positive 8 minus 8, they go bye-bye. So this is actually equal to 0. So now I'm down to 16 minus 4i squared. But simplified complex notation says I cannot have this i squared in my value. What is i squared actually equal? Oh, it equals a negative 1. So negative 4 will be multiplied by that, and I'm just going to drag the 16 along. So now we just clean it up. 16 negative 4 times a negative 1 is a plus 4. So we're actually just taking 16 and multiplying it by 4, which is 20. So this one, we just have a real value. We do not even have an imaginary value. But still, that would be in your simplified form. You just say 20 for that one. Guys, what do you think about these? These were pretty fun, right? Math is fun. Doing math is fun. Doing the problems are fun. Let me know in the comments what you think. Hopefully this video helped. And if it did, if you want to help us out, you can hit the subscribe button and tell your friends, right? If you want to help us out, tell your friends, tell your classmates, tell whoever you want to tell that this great service exists. But other than that, I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you guys all in the next lesson. Take care. Bye-bye.